Okay, we're first going to talk about soil and um, soil biology. This is so amazingly important. I started, I, I normally would do a PowerPoint, but because we're out here in the sun, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to just highlight the strong points right here. Tilling was the first to destroy the soil. Does anybody remember, or you've heard about the Dust Bowl? Yeah. yeah. In the 1930s and 40s, there was a drought. It actually started in the 1886 with the Homestead Act, when the United States said, okay, if you can stay on about 160 acres for at least five years, and you just pay this fee, we'll give you the land. So people started tilling, tilling, and it, there was um, the dry wheat crop and um, cattle. And as the demand for uh, dry wheat started to increase, they, they had kind of eliminated the cattle. And then we had the drought. And what it created was uh, the tilling, what it does is slices and dices, slices and dices. It slices and dices the microorganisms. It slices and dices all the nutrients. And in fact, here, because you know residential and the urban environment, they have to compact for um, roads they have to, have to compact the soil for homes and pads. And some trees you'll find in areas where there's been erosion and uh, replacement of pipe, you can see the compaction level. The tree roots might stop and then they try to branch out from there because of the compaction. Wow. And that's just here where we're not even trying to till till the land. Yeah. So every time you till till the land, you're killing microorganisms. And we get the haboobs out there too those big dust walls and that's the same yeah, thing well, that's what it is it's a, it's a wall of dust it's like snow mm -hmm. it could cover a building and 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 you could have dust for days depending on the wind mm -hmm. and for us here we get Santa Ana's mm -hmm. so but it nowhere near the kind of dust coming mm -hmm. up and um, so what's happening when you do that is you're setting the stage to grow weeds weeds are not bad I've gone around and tried to ID most of the weeds on my property to find That's out which hard. ones are edible. I have, yeah, you, I have, I have a couple books. Oh, okay. I have a couple books. Yeah, but are... I stare at them. I'm like, is that that? <laughs> In fact, the next time I have a class, I'm going to ask everybody to bring me dandelions. Okay. Because dandelions are so that's a miracle plan mm -hmm. the roots for liver the the leaves and buds for high blood pressure mm -hmm. i mean you don't even know it, it actually is a nitrogen fixer mm -hmm. you find them in lawns they're actually breaking up the soil in there wow. and that's what weeds do mm -hmm. i mean that's the reason why they find these dry airs their job is to live and die as quickly as possible because they don't have nutrients there's no water and they're trying to throw out their seed produce seed so they can go again, go again, wow. and eventually, you know, add to the soil. And then eventually, over hundreds of years, not in our time, you have to realize nature doesn't need us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need <laughs> us at all, but we need nature. Mm -hmm. And mother nature is in no hurry. She'll get it done. She'll, she'll revert this site that was kind of this oil spill, you know, equipment storage area to a natural state over hundreds of years mm -hmm. granted you know that's why the oak trees it's the perfect place for me to get maybe some mulch and leaves and mm -hmm. I always find actinomyces mycorrhizal fungi it's growing in there awesome. and I, it's very very healthy so uh, native approach Native Americans and I am Native American as well uh, their approach was to actually they stewarded the land because well they didn't have the tools that we had now the Industrial Revolution. I mean, in fact, Native Americans didn't have horses until the Spanish brought them up to Mexico. Oh, yeah, right. So you always uh, 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 you associate horses with Native Americans. They didn't have horses until all that happened. And um, they would actually, families would adopt, this is my area right here, this is my tree. And they might be migratory, like we go to the ocean during a certain time of year, we, we fish, we come back up when you know, the uh, acorns are ready to be picked, and you'd have a tree, and you took care of it. You took mm, what you needed, so leaving enough for the plant to survive, or, you know, you didn't strip it down for the wood, you didn't cut it down. So that was a real net natural approach. I made some mistakes myself. Here are my mistakes. I applied um, a systemic, or to kill the weeds. 
in that path we were walking up over here mm -hmm. because I have a DG path and I figure, well, I'm never going to plant anything here. I'm not going to throw my um, systemic, the roundup or whatever it is on these natives I have here. I'm just trying to clean the paths for everybody so we don't come up. And what happened was um, the spruce tree, it's the one right up there, you could see on this side of it, a little bit of brown leaves, do you oh, see, yeah, on yeah. the bottom, oh. the, the needles, this spruce oh, tree yeah. right back there, yeah. because of the, um, the wind. Mm. So Move the lately up. we had a complaint because I'm basically organic, besides what I did, uh, they're orga organic up here. The avocado grove next to me is organic. But when those helicopters go through and they're spraying the orange, the oranges, mm. and the, uh, grapefruits across the street from me, drift. Mm. They're, it's coming over here and whatever it is to, you know, kill some sort of a... Uh... Oh, see this guy right here? Mm -hmm. He wants to go in my mulch bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just started I'm hungry, I'm hungry. this. I just started this yesterday to show you guys. I was gonna make you what like it? build it with me. The you beetle. go in there and lay the eggs. Like a cicada or something. Yeah, just like a, a, a green beetle. beetle. Yeah. <laughs> so my mistake was I sprayed that and it and how sensitive was that spruce? Mm. It was. It started dying the needles. I went, oh my god, oh my god, that it was me. I did that. Mm. I also sprayed along my driveway, thinking. I want it clean when people come up, but you know what happened? Yes, they killed everything you could see, but all of a sudden those those thorny, prickly weeds started growing there. Right away they went, oh my gosh, dead earth. Let me let's let's get stuck here, start to put more nutrients in the soil. Mm. So weeds are not bad. I like to go foraging and, and then find the edible weeds. Now every organic here's another one. Every organic fertilizer is a salt killing your organisms. So now you're playing with dirt. You're trying to, it's, it's like something that's addicted to you constantly feeding it because it's dead, it's dead dirt. So yeah, you have to keep applying fertilizers because it's also uh, salt you're putting in there that's killing all the organisms. Mm. It's not balanced. Now, uh, has anybody done soil tests for their property? Not I, yet. I, I yeah, did, and there's a the jar year, test. But I, and it I just so kind of highlighted it right here. <laughs> the jar test, that's where you actually put soil in a jar you can use a um apple core and just stick it in the dirt because you want to know what's in that top three inch if I you really want to go farther dig a little farther put in a jar shake it up and then use the soil texture triangle to figure out what soil type you have mm -hmm. hmm. easy peasy mm -hmm. easy peasy and it's a chart you can get it online you can get instructions for that online and it's called a soil triangle yeah the soil triangle and until we run out of soil, there's no need to fix it. We're not trying to fix it. We're trying to just manage it as a loam. Like you, you're putting a mulch, chips, yeah. so it's breaking down quickly. You want to manage it as a loam. Yeah, just keep I adding. I want it to be a loam. It's more just... I want it to be that balanced, mm -hmm. nice, aerated, nutrient-rich. So we, we're feeding it. Mm -hmm. So we're just, we're just taking Mother Nature and speeding up the process, mm -hmm. right? That's what we're trying to do. And I have this really great, and I'm probably going to draw this one by hand, but this shows the roots. It shows the nodes, and that's in the in, in the rhizosome. That's where all that soil to uh, nutrient activity is happening. That's where it stores the nutrients. And then you got the my mycorrhizal fungi, which is actually this lighter color. It actually becomes an extension of the roots. And so it's it's able to absorb more nutrients. So you want to you want to uh, feed that. You want to encourage that. So the plant itself it'll it'll send out messages with, by exudates like these sugars and um, cake and cookies. It's like, hmm, what's your favorite cake and cookie? Right? What's your favorite cake and cookie? Oh, you want pie? Okay. And you oh you like biscotti? Well, I don't know what you like, but I'm gonna send that out. Kind of broadcast that out, and the all the organisms down here, they'll they 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 get attracted because I've sent out those sugars. The plant feeds itself, but in the absence of water, yes, it dies. In it, pesticides, yes, dies. Herbicides, yes, it can't it can't send those messages. 
and then and then putting fertilizers in again it's not able it's now it's just an addicted it's addicted to what you're going to feed it like eight three nines like a lot of the chemical granulator granulated stuff and yeah if it's stuff. not organic it's, not. it's got salts in it. exactly and it's it's taking out so here it is the root soil interface the rhizosphere that's why i said this is the essential driver of nutrient cycling availability and capture the mycorrhizal fungi are one of the most influential groups of soil biota because they enhance nutrient uptake properties and over here we're into building the soil structure healthy food web will suppress diseases retain nutrients we need to help because mother nature as i said is in no hurry